Good morning, good morning. Welcome to worship this morning here at Mount Lebanon United Methodist Church. You may be seated. It always amazes me. They know they're supposed to be, but they wait for me to say it. <laughs> One of these days, I'm just going to let you stand through the whole thing. <laughs> well, good morning and welcome to worship this morning. A couple brief announcements this morning. First, if you know of a high school or other graduate connected to the church family, please let me know by today or at least the first part of this week so we can make arrangements. Um, I've gotten a couple of notices from a couple folks, and I appreciate that. And thank you. Where'd you go? <laughs> and to ensure that we uh, include everybody in our family circle this this year. Next thing is, don't forget, choir rehearsal on seven, at 7 p.m. on Wednesday nights here at the church in the choir room. We've got them set up now. And don't forget our, ble- our boxes front and in the narthex for your giving, for your convenience, and so we don't have to worry about spreading any germs around, even though we seem to be moving out of this stage of life as we know it. We've always got the cold and flu season that's going to be right around the corner, so... Uh, We'll continue to do that. And we want to wish a couple folks a happy birthday. One skipped town on us, so we couldn't wish sing to him. So whoever wants to, please blow Ed Burroughs' phone up today as they skipped town and we couldn't sing to him. So we, everybody just call him individually and sing to him so uh, he knows he's loved. The other we have is Miss Annette had a birthday yesterday. Uh oh. So if Monty, Annette, who else do we got? It's it's birthday season, it seems. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted by the baby. Um, easily. So I'll be nice. I won't make you stand up. But let's sing to our birthday for our birthdays this week. Happy birthday to you. That's my contribution to the <laughs> Are there any other announcements this morning? Yes. Come stand close to a mic so you can be heard. <laughs> there are two lists that are out here on the uh, desk that's here in the uh, side uh, entrance way. One is for Safe Sanctuary which we have to go through and do. It's not as intensive as it used to be. Uh, We'll watch its videos, and it's a guide that the United Methodist Church offers us. Um, If we do need to do some background checks, we can handle that whenever it comes up. But uh, we do have to do this before we do Vacation Bible School just to make sure that everybody is trained the way they need to be in situations that may come up. We hope not. But uh, if you are interested in doing Vacation Bible School, we do need need you to sign up too for a safe sanctuary and as I get the list all together we'll decide a time whenever it's convenient for the majority of the folks who sign up so thank you we will have uh, multiple offerings at least two offerings for folks so we can uh, catch everybody on that training as it is required uh, and everybody has uh, expired the background check is mainly for me and Ed. <laughs> you know, Monty cleared. He's good. But it's mainly for me and Ed. Uh, we have too much fun. We have too much fun. All right. Anything else this morning? You're good. You're good. Ann isn't here. All right, let us enter into a time of worship with the passing of the peace. May the peace of Christ be with you today and every day. Join me in prayer. Lord, we have gathered here. We have gathered here in the space that we as a congregational community have built for you, Lord. A space in which we worship you, Lord. A space in which we encounter the Spirit, Lord. May you be in this place today. May what 
comes out of our mouths be of you. May our singing be of you. May our praise be of you. And Lord, most of all, may we find an abundance of you in our lives. With that abundance, may we be able to give to others through service, through missions, through monetary means, through whatever means you direct us to do. May it be done in your name. May the tithes, offerings, and givings that is given through our abundance, Lord, may it be used in ways and means that is of, and, uh, of you and for you, Lord. I ask this in your Son's risen name, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please rise and join us in our opening hymn, Take Time to Be Holy. The words will be on the screen. This time, I would like to open up to the congregation for prayer requests, praise reports, and anything on the hearts, minds, and souls of our congregational family this morning. Yes. Yes. for Judy Ruth Castle.
please also remember Harry Smith, who was the uh, who was also on that call, as he is still on the ho in the hospital on a ventilator, and been now almost three weeks now. So remember Harry Smith as well. Are there others? Yes, sir. For Miss Hiley, Judy's neighbor. Continue to keep uh, Judy Smith as well um, in your prayers as she uh, continues to go through this process. Are there others? P-E-L-L-I-N-S. She works with us at uh, hospice down by Randolph Hospice House. She was going on vacation this week, and on Thursday her home burned down. Um, we think it was a total loss due to an electrical problem. And some of you may remember her father, Jim Bullens, who was the founder of Jim's Kids years ago. For years, he did a tremendous service to this community uh, for dis kids with disabilities and Down syndrome children. They provided special parties, community parties for these kids each and every year while he was alive. So. Please be in prayer. Her mother lives with her. Uh, her mother did not go with her on vacation, but she wasn't at home at the time. So both of them have been displaced and pretty much only have the clothes on their back. So please be in prayer for them. For, do you know her mom's name? I don't. Okay, for Diane Bullens and her mother as they've been displaced by a house fire uh, this week. Are there others? Let us go to the Lord. Lord, we come to you this day. We come to you each and every day. We come to you with our worries, with our wants, with our pains, with our sufferings, with whatever is on our hearts, minds, and souls, Lord. You know before we even come to you what we will be asking for, Lord. You know what is needed in each of these situations, Lord. You know how to heal. You know how to be present. You know how to comfort. You know how to love, Lord. Allow us to see that and be that each and every day for you in the place of your physical being, Lord. Continue to guide us through our mission, through our journey, as we continue on our walk on this world. Lord, be with these particular situations we've raised up to you today. For Judy Ruth Castle, for Harry Smith, for Diane Bullins and her mother, for Miss Hiley, for each and every person, for Judy Smith, for each and every person, for Dennis, each and every person, Lord, that we think about each and every day and want to know that they are all right. Lord, we can't physically be in each and every one of these individuals' lives. But Lord, you can. You can be the person, the presence, the feeling in each and every one of these situations that needs to be had, that needs to be felt, that needs to be given. Each of us can then be your hands and feet. Lord, allow us to see your mission, your vision before us. And not to ask questions, but just go. Just allow ourselves to be your hands and feet. I ask this in your Son's holy and risen name, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture today continues in the book of Acts, starting in the 16th chapter, 9th verse. And it reads as follows. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia. 
being coveted, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Taurus and took a straight course to Samthrace. The following day to Nepalis. And from there to Philippi, which is a leading city in the district of Macedonia, in a Roman colony. We remained there in the city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river where we were supposed to, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the woman who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Titharia and the dealer in the purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what Paul said, what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. We'll change up in our uh, order here today. We are actually going to sing another hymn instead of having the choir do an anthem uh, because we're missing so many of the choir this morning. So if you would take out your hymnals in front of you, yes, those books you remember from way back when, back before, back before COVID times, and turn to page 451, we are going to sing together, Be Thou Vision. Please rise as you... Amen. You may be seated. See, we still do know how to look at the books. <laughs> Choir, you may go wherever you may please. <laughs> You're dismissed. How about that? <laughs> if that's where you wish to go, by all means. I ain't going to stop you. Visions. Visions. I remember many times as I was growing up, not too long ago, seeing these very machines on the sides of amusement parks. Or My most common memory is that of growing up in southwestern Michigan. Though these machines were on every single beach pointed towards Illinois, pointed towards Chicago. Rumor was that if you put a quarter into these little binocular machines, the lenses would open up and you would see the Chicago skyline. Now, in all the times that I went and did this and spent who knows how many quarters trying to see the Chicago skyline, it was never on that right day where I could do it. Because it had to be just perfect. The clouds had to be clear. 
and everything had to work just right to be able to do it. Now, people say it could be done. But even then, even then, in my mind, looking through those binoculars, I could visualize what that skyline looked like. Back then it was called the Sears Tower, and I could visualize seeing that as I had seen it in up close many times. But each and every time I went, I would see those signs, see the Chicago skyline through the, through the eyes of the, these binoculars. Now, could it have just been a scam to get money? Maybe. But if you let your mind go, if you stop having rational thinking, if you were able to visualize what was being implored, then, then you could see it. Then you could always see it when you look through there. Now these are put up at various different locations. Some just to look out over the horizon of the ocean, off the piers. Some to be able to see the animals up a little closer as they are at the zoo in the African exhibits and such. But in each one of these, as you're looking through the binoculars, before that quarter runs out, as that time's ticking away, you see something different. Each and every person sees and visualizes something different through that, those binoculars. That's where we are in our scripture today. Paul has this vision. Paul has this vision. And in our, in our scripture... Paul has a vision of a man in Macedonia calling to hear the gospel. We'll get back to that point in just a moment. But Paul had that vision. Paul didn't sit on that vision. Paul didn't wonder about that vision. Paul didn't contemplate that vision. Paul didn't sit in meetings for weeks or months wondering if he should go and do what this vision is telling Paul, it tells us, immediately went with them. Them being Timothy and Silas and the other apostles of the time. Paul didn't think about this rationally. Paul was in the emotional state of mind. Paul went when he was called. Paul did what he was called. Paul took this vision to the next level. Now the word vision, I found out, appears... In NRSV scripture, where'd it go? Let's see, 82 times. The word vision translates in NRSV 82 times. 13 of those in the apocryphal text that are not in our canon. So that leaves us with 69 times that the word vision appears in our scripture. Now in the Old Testament, the Hebrew scriptures, it appears most in Daniel. There's no surprise there. But in the New Testament, the word vision appears the most, not where it would, you would think it would appear in the book of Revelation, but instead, right where we're at, in the book of Acts. It appears 11 of those 69 times in the book of Acts. Visions are being had. Things are happening. Think about that. We're in the church, the new church, the church of Acts, as I've regularly call it, Acts of the Apostles. Use the ver this word 11 times. We're thinking about how these events are inwardly coming to us through these visions, through these moments, and how we outwardly react to them. Now, if you're John Wesley, an, inward, an outward expression of an inward feeling is a means of grace. So these visions could be considered means of grace. But having a vision and acting upon this vision are two separate things. Remember those binoculars? If we look through those binoculars and see something happening and don't do anything about it, why are we even looking through those binoculars? Why are we even setting ourselves up to see something if we're not going to act upon it? Paul immediately acted upon his vision. Paul immediately went to Macedonia. Paul immediately got his crew together and left. They sailed for three days. It was those days following where things got really interesting. 
We hear that Paul went on the Sabbath down by the river. Down by the river. Have some memories of times you're down by the river. You're hearing that cascading water. The rippling of the creek or the river going by. The sounds of nature. The creatures that are coming around or you hear rustling in the wind. So he went down to the river to relax on the Sabbath day. It was there where Paul found the target of this vision, in my opinion. It's there where Paul was able to encounter why he was called to this place. It wasn't a man calling him from Macedonia. It was Lydia. It was Lydia calling him from Macedonia. Paul had assumed it was a man because the, a man would be the one that would be learning about this at this time. A man would be the one that would be the purveyor of and the spreader of this good news. But it wasn't this time. It was Lydia. It was Lydia. Lydia's story is an interesting story. See, Lydia was a very successful Homemaker, as well as businesswoman. She ran a household, as it tells us. It tells us nowhere about any men in this household. Lydia is selling purple cloth. Now, in this time, this purple cloth was only worn by the wealthiest of people. And purple was also a sign of power, a sign of might, a sign that you were something special in that room. Because if you could afford the purple cloth that Lydia was selling you, you would be in some sort of power. But she was down there with her household, which is presumed to be all women, praying and listening to what Paul had to say. Listening to where Paul was leading. Listening to where Paul was moving. And then Lydia got baptized. And so did her whole household. Now we're not sure if prior to this Lydia was totally all for worshiping just one Lord. But we know that following the baptism, that's what occurs in your life. So this woman, who was the head of her household has called upon Paul to come and baptize her. I wonder if things would have been different if Paul had known that it was a woman that was calling. I wonder if Paul would have went so quickly had had he known it was her that was calling. We won't ever know that response because Paul didn't sit down and think about it. Paul didn't pray about it, didn't rationalize it, didn't have a committee meeting to find out what it meant. Instead, Paul just went. Paul went to spread the gospel of Jesus. Paul went to Macedonia, as he was called. Lydia would change the thoughts of Paul. Lydia would understand what Paul was saying. And not only what Paul was saying, but Lydia showed her love of Jesus by asking them back. If you remember, it said in our scriptures that if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. That means they went back to her home. So Paul and his group went back to Lydia's house. So where does this leave us today? What should we be taking from this? I think the biggest message here is even with our assumptions applied to not question what the Lord asks us to do. Even with our own human assumptions put onto a situation. See, Paul assumed that he was being called by a man. But in fact, he was being called by Lydia. 
We may assume and put assumptions on things that we are being called to do that isn't what we're supposed to be doing. Instead, we are to, as Paul did, immediately try to figure out what means it takes to get done what we are called to do. If we begin to do that, and we are able to then fulfill the word of the Lord, we can do amazing things. We can spread the gospel. We can share the life of Jesus Christ. We can call, be called to doing what, we are, what our mission is. And I wonder sometimes in our own lives if that's why it's so hard to say no. That's why it's so hard, I know for me, to say no, especially when anything comes my way. Because I never know if that's going to be the moment that the Lord is sending me to do something. If that's going to be the moment that I'm able to share the gospel with somebody that hasn't heard it. If that's the moment that the experience is going to change me and make me have a different appreciation for who the Lord is. Or if it's going to change somebody else to have a different appreciation. In each and every one of these moments that we have, though, I can almost guarantee that you will be changed if you follow the Lord. You will be lifted up in some way, shape, or form if you follow the Lord. So allow yourself to have those moments. Allow yourself, no matter where you are in your journey, to continue to follow the Lord. Continue to listen to the visions that are put forth. Continue to find yourself down by the river. Continue to find your river. Your river doesn't have to be the physical river. Your river can be a quiet space out back. Your river can be your car listening to music. Your river can be wherever you find peace. And wherever you find that peace, you are connected to the Lord. Heck, your river could be your front porch as you watch the cars drive by. So let's find our river. Let's connect with our Lord. And let's follow the visions that are be being sent by the Spirit each and every day. Amen?
Amen. Let's go down to the river. Wherever that river may be for you, wherever that moment in space and time is for you, wherever you are able to find the Lord, wherever you are able to feel the Spirit come down upon you, whether it be from others or just yourself, gather in that space. Let the Lord come into that space and allow yourself to hear the visions the Lord has for each and every one of you each and every day. And don't just hear those visions, but act upon those visions. And act without asking what is going on here. For the Lord's faith, the Lord's visions are higher and more powerful than anything we can rationally understand as human beings. So as this candle leaves this space today, please rise and allow yourself to be led by the light down to your personal river today. Go in peace, knowing that your river is somewhere waiting for you. Amen. It's one story. 